This has got to be one of the most impressive isopods in the hobby. Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarimax Pets, and today's video is a species profile on Porcelio expansus. This species, which in nature is found only in Spain, is one of the largest species of terrestrial isopods known, reaching a length of approximately 1.5 inches. Though Porcelio magnificus and Porcelio hoffmansegei may have expanses beaten in terms of sheer length, Porcelio expansus has a much wider body, which is emphasized by the way the tergites or perionites flare out from the body. Mature males also have very long exopodite uropods. The gray background color provides high contrast to the skirt and to the variable white markings on the perion. I nominate this isopod as most likely to be mistaken for a trilobite. Though it certainly looks primordial, it is only very distantly related to the trilobite, and unlike some trilobite and isopod species, it cannot conglobate. Common names for this isopod include the Betelgeuse isopod, Dragon isopod, and the Expanded isopod. But even by hobbyists, it is often simply referred to as Porcelio expansus, or a shortened version of that name. There are a couple of different localities available. Perhaps the most common is the one with a white to off-white skirt. There's another locality with a more orange skirt, some of which have been line bred in captive culture for a more intense orange color. The only non-wild type variant of this species that I keep is Autumnal Equinox, an attractive and variable morph, most of which appear caramel to orange. This species produces several broods per year. In my experience, it seems to be a less seasonal breeder than some of the large Mediterranean Porcelio species. I've seen young of varying sizes in my enclosure at any given time of the year. The males will fight by pushing one another with their heads, so providing plenty of space and hides so that the males can stay out of each other's way, at least to some extent, is recommended. I'm not sure of the exact brood size, but the young seem to be fairly large when they emerge, and the number of young per brood is fairly small, based on the Groups of young that I see, I would estimate fewer than 20 per brood is average. Before we focus on the care of Porcelio expansus, I'd like to give a shout out to those who support Aquarimax Pets through the Patreon platform. Patreon is a fantastic way to support people who create something that you believe in. I really enjoy sharing what I have learned about the various creatures I keep with you, and patrons help me to do just that in so many ways from helping me to maintain and upgrade my filming equipment to helping me care for the animals that I have. Thank you, patrons, for all that you do. If you appreciate the way in which I share information here on YouTube, and you'd like to help me keep doing it, you can go to patreon.com and search for Aquarimax Pets, or just click on the link at the end of this video, or in the description. And now, on to Porcelio expansus husbandry. Care for this species is, in many respects, what you'd expect for a large Mediterranean Porcelio species. Since it is a larger species of isopod, it will need a fairly large enclosure as the culture grows. You might start out in a 6-quart, knowing that you'll need to upgrade quickly. I have one colony in a 28-quart bin currently, and a younger colony in a 16-quart bin that I will soon need to split or upgrade. This species does not seem to be much of a burrower or substrate eater, so an inch or so of base substrate followed by another inch of leaf litter seems to be adequate. Good ventilation for this species is necessary, but there's no need to overdo it. Provide some cross ventilation and some top ventilation, keeping in mind that humidity and airflow in the room in which you keep your Porcelio expansus will help determine exactly how much ventilation you will need. A moisture gradient is important. There should be a mossy hydration station, and the substrate should gradually become somewhat drier across the enclosure, with plenty of hides all along the continuum. This species does not necessarily need a bone-dry area, though it should have areas that are drier than the hydration station. Regarding temperature, I would say that it is important not to subject this species to sudden dips or peaks in temperature if you can help it. A stable room temperature with a moderate night drop, and again a moderate gradual seasonal variation, should be acceptable. Provide plentiful concave hides for this species in various sizes all across the enclosure. I try to provide both cork bark and egg crate. I suggest offering as many hides as you can reasonably fit in the enclosure. With regard to preferred foods, as I mentioned before, this species is not as big a substrate eater as some isopods, 
So try fish food pellets, dog kibble, supreme isobod chow, as well as some fresh vegetables such as squash. Leaf litter should of course be present at all times. The feeding response for this species, at least in the densities I have kept them in, has not been stellar. They seem to take their time to approach the food dish, and I have never seen a full-on feeding frenzy. I wonder if that's partly due to their territorial nature. I see them at the food dish, but usually singly or in small groups. The males, as I alluded to before, are territorial, and some say this species may engage in cannibalism. Whatever the reason, you may experience some die-off with mature adults on occasion, and I've certainly seen it happen. Providing multiple feeding stations within the enclosure may help reduce fighting and competition. It's worth a try anyway. I personally have never tried keeping expenses as part of a cleanup crew. It might work with a reptile species that would not be interested in preying upon it. There are a lot of snakes. It might be worth trying with, but like I said, I've never done it myself. If you have used this species as a biocustodian, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. The real reason anyone keeps this species is for its striking appearance. It really is hard to beat in that department, though it won't win any prizes for boldness or daytime activity levels. I'm not sure how completely it will acclimate to a clear walled display enclosure and exposure to daylight, but over time many isopods will become accustomed to such an environment to a large extent. If you've kept this species in a display enclosure, let me know what your experience has been. I wouldn't necessarily recommend Porcelio expansus as a beginner species. I'd say that experience with one or two of the other Mediterranean Porcelio species like Hoffman's Agai or possibly Porcelio ornatus would be a good prerequisite to keeping expansus. The startle response of this species is a little unpredictable. Some individuals will run when you lift a hide, but others will remain in place immobile, at least for a while. To sum up, the pros of this species are its very impressive size and uniquely beautiful patterning, and its cons are the fact that it can sometimes be subject to die-off. It's also fairly expensive for an isopod, although the price has come down to some degree. I'd say once you have a little isopod experience under your belt, that this fantastic species is definitely worth keeping. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.